In this Midwest Outdoor Chasers episode, we set our sights on a heartland delicacy, catfish, and we embark on the muddy Missouri River with our good friend Brandon. Local legend is a strong phrase, but how else do you describe the most prolific catfisherman in the area? Brandon Kephart owns and runs Mogart Bait Shop in Missouri Valley and has one of the most impressive fishing resumes of anyone you'll meet. On top of the bait shop, he also does guided fishing charters and his clients can attest to his acumen. This summer, it was our turn to hop in his boat and hunt down some giants. We are a group of guys from the heartland pursuing our passion in nature. We don't do it because it's easy and we don't do it because it's comfortable. We do it because something deep within us calls us to connect with our roots, step into the circle of life and to push ourselves to our limits. It's not just the hunt, it's the experience and it's what makes us who we are. We are the Midwest Outdoor Chasers. <laughs> so these are the poles he sells. You can see he paints it, yeah. and then he, he melts this and makes it sharp, so you can shove it in the sand. Puts a notch in there so that you just wrap your line around it. It's nice and clean. I think, I think these might be 20, and then the limb lines um, are 25. It's good to have some of both, but the poles are more versatile. Otherwise, you got to find a limb to hang a line off. But the limb lines are more stout and they have huge hooks. How do you hook them things on there? You get them through the lip? Yeah, so it depends if you're in the current. If you're in the current, then you yeah, right through. Uh, yeah, they go right in their mouth and out the top out their nostrils. Yeah, you get it. But if they're in like still water or slab water, but, then just hook them up. Hang the back of the wood in there. You walk in there. I'm going to do everything I can to get you guys a fish. You know, like yeah, that. and you're really open with info. You know, spots and advice. I'm going to some of my honey bowls and I'm like, damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you met some people there yeah. already. So, but it's all good, dog. That's people you know, that's what fish is about. Is yeah. who you meet and you know, yeah. stuff like that. So, Thanks, thank Brandon. You so much. Yeah, have you ever seen them Asians jump? No. Dude, if you get into a group of them, there'll be 30 to pop out of the water. It's nuts. All right, this is the biggest fish I caught today. Guess why I caught him on? What? A clover leaf. What? I ran out of worms, and I'm like, I'm gonna try. I've been trying to catch him all the whole time because I saw him on his nest, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't take my worm for nothing. Put a clover leaf on there. He and I was like, got you now. Luke, if you want, I'll put you on this wing dam. <laughs> Scared the sh <laughs> What the Dude, knock it out. I was found here. You come around here. All right, guys, we are out on the Missouri River tonight, uh, setting set lines and throwing out some poles looking for catfish. Noel Burleson's more of an expert on this than I am, uh, so I'm gonna let him explain. Expert's pretty generous. He's um, the best. But I've certainly is. got a lot of money wrapped up in it. <laughs> you can do five set lines per person. We are, we're well under that. And then now we're doing a little bank fishing here as the sun goes down and the bite should hopefully pick up. So this is a bank pole or a ditty pole. It's got a lot of names, but Luke bought a couple of these from Mogart's there in Mo Valley tonight. First, you've got the line here. Foot's set up right where you got the weight and then a heavy, heavy swivel and then a heavy duty hook. He paints it camo, so less chance of someone else checking your line and he tapers the end here so that it goes down into the mud or the sand nice and easily and then he puts a little notch there then you can take and run your line through that knot keep your whole setup nice and clean nice compact system that you can buy right off the shelf at mogart's there These catfish look different on the Missouri. 
A little bit thinner. Straight out? Yeah, that'd be cool. So we didn't have a ton of luck tonight. Threw out some ditty poles. I think between Luke and I, we've got a good 10 out or something. 10 out total. We did some yeah. pole fishing off of a sandbar. Didn't have any luck. Got a couple bites back in the morning and have a 60 pound monster on there <laughs> with this, our, our local expert. Yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. I want to go fish or what? Yeah. Yeah? Did it take it right away or did it slowly take it? Right on. That's all night last night that they just kept coming, just hammering them. And then they, so stay close to your pole. Good luck to you. Which, uh, how deep is it? It doesn't say on that thing. Four two. That's about how deep I want to be. Basically, feel for that drop off. Yeah, anywhere from that that three to seven, four to eight foot range. That dorsal, right below the dorsal, but above the spine, right in the middle. You want that circle hook? That's about as much as you want to fill that gap. Because if you fill that any more than that, then then the, the hook won't turn and set. Okay. So, you know, basically those will set themselves. But now, if you fill that gap, it, it won't set. It'll just pull it right out of the fish's mouth. So you see that uh, reflective sign straight ahead of us? Yeah. So it's red. Red is Iowa side. Nebraska side. So basically, that tells you which part of the river to stay on at night so you don't hit those rock jetties. Okay. Have you ever seen that? Oh, oh, it's a bit easy. Oh, yeah, it's hard to get. Scared him. That's sweet. It's full, but do a, I do a snap swivel because that's what I have. And then wait on top and then a leader to your hook. Gotcha. Let's see if my uh, walleye rigging skills transfer over. Never lost a walleye, so that's good. Basically, when it first dropped, you could feel it, it didn't drop very far. And like second or third time doing it, you could, it felt, you could just feel yeah. it drop, you know, yeah. three seconds before it hit bottom again. So we put a couple, those last bank lines we put out, our depth finder, we were a ways, like 50 yards out from shore, and it said it was like five foot deep. So we thought, like in that where like the flatheads would come up and spawn in the shallower. Well, yeah, especially right now too though, with. I mean, bait fish, at nighttime, the bait fish are going to go up in the shallows to hide. Yeah. You know, so the, of course, all the bait fish are going to go up in there and try to eat, try to feed at night. But really, at nighttime, anywhere from three to eight foot of water is ideal. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was talking more about those pinch points is in places like that where you've got, you know, five foot of water that goes to three foot of water and all of a sudden it drops back down to a 15 foot hole. Where like the only way they can get in and out of that hole is through, you know, that one shallow spot. And so. You can catch catfish any time of the day. Your odds increase like dramatically during the night. They're just nighttime feeders. They're sensitive to the daylight. So like I had a little catfish in the aquarium for years and I just watch him and I study his feeding habits. Like I'd feed him, you know, with the lights on or feed him at nighttime and just kind of see how he, you know, how he fed differently. And just, you could just see at nighttime, you know, with those lights off, throw some food in there, it would just go crazy all around the whole tank, you know, cleaning it dry. But if you like, uh, during the, with the lights on, it will just go out real quick, grab a little piece, and then go right back into its hole. Okay, now just uh, all the structure, I'm just trying to figure out where the back current's at and where we can anchor up to throw our lines out without them spinning up on top of each other, which I think if we throw the front of our boats off here, 
and just let the tail ends kind of push out, throw off the back of the boat. Be a good spot. But with all the structure here, good idea to run like short leaders and uh, not you know, not cast out super far to help from getting hung up. Oh yeah! yeah. 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 Nice blue. That's heavy, man. I think that's bigger than what we caught the other night. I'll tell you what, these things are way more strong than the flathead. Like, just my hand under his gills. He's like a strong fish. So I bought that boat new in 14. Before then I would just kind of fish bass, you know, farm ponds, bass fishing. And then I bought that river boat and then uh, met Morgan. So that's why Mogar, his first name is Morgan, my last name is Kepar. So first part of his name, last part of my last name. And that was our, our team name for like uh, tournaments and stuff. So we fished a couple tournaments and did really good in them. We, like there was a tournament of 90 some teams. We fished, finished fourth in, and just basically I learned a lot from him and his dad. They're river rats. Uh, they just taught me a lot of stuff about it. And I think it's just because the unknown. You just like we were just talking about the eels earlier. You know, it's like you never know what you're gonna catch out here and here. I mean, the ocean that like, you go there. How many different kinds of fish are in the ocean? You know, farm ponds. It's crappie, bass, bluegill. So here, it's just you never know. It's, could be a drum, could be a sturgeon, could be catfish. The size of them, it's just, when you get to pull out a fish that's, you know, as big as you, if not bigger than you, that's just cool to see, to know like those fish lived over 20 years. That and the danger factor of it could be a part of it. I mean, my mom growing up, she lost a couple friends on the river. I mean, you have to respect this river though, because if, if you don't, it will take your life. It, literally every, every year people die in this river, so. Like, you know, something like those big, you know, like those rock jetties there. You jump off, like the biggest boulder on the rock jetty, you think that's the one you want to stand on, right? That's the one that typically moves. Things like that, that just kind of keep you on your toes, keep, keep it exciting, I guess, in a way, yeah. so. There's a dude selling those throw lines, so I buy like a few of those, and one of the first couple nights we ran them, we would basically just put live bluegills on them, and there was the first 30 pound catfish, you know, whatever ever caught, and after that, it was game on. I wonder what it is. It's got that head that's food on it. Yeah, I know. That's what I love about flatheads too is their colors. Like if they sit on the bottom a lot, they'll be like real dark. Basically, what it is I love about the river, I mean, that's it right there. So, throw a spoon to catch bait fish for later tonight and end up catching a 15 pound flathead, you know, <laughs> on eight pound line and a <laughs> ultra light rod. You got him? Yep. Definitely the best fish I've caught on rod and reel all summer. We ran into Brandon at the dock. He couldn't make it out with us tonight, but he did suggest this spot and he sold us the bait that we caught this beautiful fish on. We got up, anchored down, tossed out, and I mean 45 seconds had a bite. And then fought this beautiful flathead in. That's gonna be just perfect eating size. Let's see if it's lots of belly meat on this big beautiful fish and you'll get some great fillets off of it too. This is exactly the kind of fish that you'd want to catch because it's great to eat, fun to fight. 13.8.
now the fishing season is drawing to a close, the question remains. What is it about these turbid waters that provokes us to give up money, gas, tackle, and sleep? Why would we spend a summer on a cramped boat early in the morning, late at night, suffering mosquito bites, sunburn, disgruntled spouses, trashed circadian rhythms, and a wounded bank account? For a beautiful flathead filet? Maybe. The tasty fried golden nuggets these fish yield are nothing to underestimate. But I think it's something else that causes us to trade our pillows for our fishing reels. I think it's the unknown. The true giants dwell in these murky waters. Mystery swims beneath the surface. Adventure floats along with us on the bosom of the river. And some unknown monster may just be around the next bend.